Nobody mentioned that I am about a year late with this trend, thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we are going to be tier ranking all the books I have read so far this year. So I literally last night finished my 50th book of the year. I am three books behind schedule to read 100 but this is halfway of the books I hope to read this year. I, I should be able to read 100. I should. I should be able to read 100. So I thought this would be a good point to check in and do a tier rank. This is going to be completely subjective. I've never done a tier rank before. I'm not very good at it. So... <laughs> And it isn't gonna be like based on star rating. Like I think possibly a three star could rank above maybe a four star on this list. It's all down to the feeling they give me like months on from having read them. Here is the tier ranking. Of course, because it's me, all of the categories are memes. Okay, it's just how we're doing it in this house. Let's start at the bottom. At the bottom is get that fire exit door, I'm off by Queen Gemma Collins. Get that fire exit door, I'm off. So these are the worst books. These are the books I'm like, get that fire exit door, I'm off. I'm not dealing with this book anymore. It can get out of my life. I don't really have many good feelings about it. Get that fire exit door, I'm off. Secondly, I don't remember love. It was an awful long time ago. I can't do Lorraine's accent, but that is the queen of daytime TV, Lorraine. I don't remember, I don't remember love. I don't remember at all. I really don't, it was an awful long time ago. It's a book that is completely forgettable. Like, I don't know who she is. I cannot remember much of the plot, characters, anything. Third is push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. Another Gemma appearance. Push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. So this is a book that I'm like, I quite enjoyed, but I felt like it was missing a bit of excitement. It was missing a little bit of something, something to get me going. Then we have I'm an acquired taste. Don't like me? Acquire some taste. I'm an acquired taste. You don't like me? Acquire some taste. So this is a book that's, you know, a bit better than the one below, but I didn't quite love it. And maybe the problem is I need to acquire some taste. There's uh, quite a few books on this list that I think were good, but they were missing something. And I think that something was due to me, not due to the book itself necessarily. Like we just didn't vibe. Then we have the album's amazing, song to song, I can't stress it enough. The album's amazing, song to song, I can't stress it enough. This is a great book, a book I really, really enjoyed, song to song, you know, it's a it's a hit album. And then at the top it's, I feel faint. We struck gold, ladies. No, I don't, I feel faint. We struck gold, lady. This is gold, the creme de la creme, the best books, my favorite books. So these are alphabetical lies, I think. So first we have got, a Quiet Life in the Country. Hmm. I think I'm gonna put this in the album's amazing song to song. I can't stress it enough. This is a really fun, like, cozy murder mystery. It's the whole series of these audiobooks is on script, so I'm just gonna slowly listen to the audiobooks of them. I've only listened to this first one, but it's like a cute historical murder mystery that are very basic, but like, I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it and I would read it again. Amari and the Night Brothers. I don't feel like it's We've Struck Gold. I think that's another, the album's amazing, song to song, I can't stress it enough. Great middle grade, probably my favorite middle grade I've ever read. Amazing fantasy, great vibes, great characters. Absolutely just like, so captivating. An Ember in the Ashes by Sava Tahir. Now that's at the bottom. I'm gonna say I don't remember love. It was an awful long time ago. This book, I don't think I even remembered it once I finished it. Such a forgettable YA fantasy to me. Like, I just didn't vibe with the relationship. I didn't really vibe with any of it. Haha, <laughs> this is not for me. No. It wasn't horrendous. Like, I feel like I may give Sabbath to Hero a go in the future. I'm not gonna continue on with this series, but I know Sabbath to his adult debut, I think is coming out next year. And I might give that a go, depending on what like the initial reviews are, because I enjoyed Saboteur's writing, but the plot is like every other YA fantasy plot. The characters like every other YA fantasy plot. Like, I just did not vibe. Before the coffee gets cold. Hmm. Now this did make me cry, but I feel like I've lost a bit of my love for it as time has gone on from that initial love. I'm gonna put I'm Acquired Taste, Don't Like Me, Acquire Some Taste. I think it's a great book, but I don't have very strong feelings towards it. Black Enough. Hmm. This is an anthology. I feel like I need to be harsh. I feel like I need to be harsh in these ratings. Oh, this is hard. I'm going to say push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. I think it's hard with anthologies for them to be a hit. I love reading them, but it's hard for them to be a hit because 
you have all these different authors. Some of them are going to be to your taste. Some are like really not going to be to your taste. <laughs> like really not going to be to your taste. It's hard for me to have like a really lasting feeling months on because I barely remember like when I've read a whole novel, but this was like 10 pages of each story. So I don't remember many of them. So I feel like maybe I needed a bit more from it. The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. That's our, that's going to be our first struck gold. That's going to be our first we've struck gold, ladies. Amazing. One of my favourite books like I've read so far this year. This is so good, oh my god. It's told in verse, it's magical, wonderful. I just loved it. I just abs absolutely loved it. Oh, Come Tumbling Down by Sean and Maguire. I'm gonna go for another We've Struck Gold, ladies. This was the first in the Wayward Children series I've read physically, and I think it really helped me to enjoy it more. That was my favourite so far in the series. Crooked Kingdom, um, is it We've Struck Gold? No, I'm gonna put it in the album's amazing song to song, I can't stress it enough. Like, it was great. I did give it like five stars, basically. It was like a 4.5, five stars. And I really, really enjoyed it. But maybe it's because I had such high hopes for Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I feel like they're so hyped that I feel like I was always going to be a bit disappointed by them. Not disappointed. The album's amazing. Song to song. Can't stress it enough. Like, it's a great book. But it's... I didn't feel like it could ever be We've Struck Gold because... I feel like the hype that had been set for it was too high and it was never going to happen. Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, then I might get excited. Yeah, mm-mm, 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 like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> Actually, it needs to not give me a kiss because the romance was part of the problem. The romance was insta-love and I didn't find it particularly enjoyable. I think you've got to love the romance to love this book and I just didn't. The Devil on the Dark Water. It's another We've Struck Gold. It has to be another We've Struck Gold. It has to be another We've Struck Gold. Hey. <laughs> Success. I really enjoyed this. It's a great historical mystery. I really preferred it to The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I read more recently. I think this is better. Like, I think give this a go if you've been scared off by The Seven Deaths or you read that and you didn't really enjoy it. I've got my mum reading it at the moment. I'm really excited to hear what she thinks. But yeah, Devil in the Dark Water was just like a great mystery. Fable by Adrian Young. We've got our first Get That Fire Exit Door. I'm off. Mm -mm. <laughs> This was so fucking boring. That's all I'm going to say. No plot. Plot non-existent. I don't know her. No plot. No plot. No plot to this book. You guys, no plot. It was not good. I do not understand people, how people like this book. Like, it was... Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Fat Chance Charlie Vega, I have just read. I literally... That was my 50th book that I just finished. I'm going to put it in... The album's amazing, song to song, I can't stress it enough. I really enjoyed it. Great contemporary romance. So many emotions. It was really good. But I'm not going to say anything else because you got to wait to the weekend. <laughs> you got to wait to Sunday for that vlog. Get a Life, Chloe Brown. It has to be another The Album's Amazing Song to Song. I can't stress it enough. It was only the second romance book that I've ever really, really loved. I really liked the romance. I thought it was so readable. I'm really excited to read the second and third in the um, Sisters series. I've got them. So hopefully I will get to them soon. Ghost Squad. Oh, now here's the thing. I didn't dislike Ghost Squad, so maybe, mm, but I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> so I feel like it has to go in. I don't remember love. It was an awful long time ago. I don't really remember anything about it. It's like this supernatural middle grade, but it was just a bit like average for me. And I, I months on, I don't remember anything. I would like to defend myself, but sadly, that's the truth. So Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is two in a series. Good Girl's Guide to Murder is going, we struck gold ladies. Good Girl Bad Blood is going. The album's amazing, song to song. Really enjoyed these. These are part of like my favorite YA murder mystery series at the moment. Good Girl Bad Blood, I did find a bit more predictable. The ending did annoy me, but ele other elements of it were better. So like I thought the writing was better. I thought the incorporation of mixed media was better. I thought the character arc that our main character went on was better. But the ending was just really predictable and I feel like that's such a key element of the book. It's okay for it, for me, it's, I've talked about this before, it's okay for me for the ending of a mystery to be like ambitious and not quite pull it off. That, I won't usually deduct points for that. But if it's like a really predictable ending that I've been thinking for the whole time, like, oh, I hope it isn't that, then I will deduct points. Heartstopper Volume 4, We Struck Gold Ladies. I said I was going to try and be harsh, but like these are, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm being honest. <laughs> sure, Jan. 
Heartstopper will always be Reef Shot Gold. Heartstopper is the only series that I go into knowing what I'm gonna rate it. Like, I know what I'm gonna rate it. I know it's gonna be five stars. I know it's gonna be a favorite. It will never be less than that. Here's Beauty by Jack Harbin. Get that fire exit door, I'm off. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> This disappointed me because the first romance book I ever loved was Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin and then this was just uh, not my favourite, not my favourite. It was a Beauty and the Beast retelling but it was just, it just wasn't it for me, it just wasn't it for me. A History of What Comes Next, this album's amazing song, song, I can't stress it enough. I really enjoyed this, I thought it was such an original sci-fi. It's weird so like be prepared for that, it's a bit strange, I don't think everyone's gonna love it but for me I really enjoyed it but I understand why everyone's giving it like two stars but I really enjoyed it. Honey Girl, the album's amazing song to song I guess enough. <laughs> I really enjoyed this as well, this was one I read recently in my last vlog. I thought this was just another really nice like romance contemporary but the character goes on an amazing arc, you know looking at burnout and work culture and self pressure and how, in how to navigate that and how to like erase that kind of mentality and it's something that I can relate to a lot. It's such a quiet book, such a contained book, I really really enjoyed it. House in the Cerulean Sea, We Struggle with Ladies, I loved this book, it's probably one of my favourite books I've read this year, I thought it was just so magical, heartwarming, cosy. House of Leaves. Oh. This book took me two months to read. Two months. Two months. Where should this go? I think I gave it like 2.5, three stars because there were elements of it that were five stars. There were elements of it that were one star. It's I've never had a book like that that's so, you know, different parts of it I react to so differently. I'm going to go for I'm an acquired taste. Don't like me acquire some taste because... I can see how people love this book and get obsessed with it. I can see how people like think this is the best book that has ever been written in the world. It's not, like it's not. And if you think that, you're, you're incorrect, but. <laughs> Don't be Don't fucking do rude. Are you kidding me? I think part of it may just be me and the fact that I was like really busy with uni at the time, whatever, I understand. In Order to Live by You Know Me Park, Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm gonna go the album's amazing song to song. Really insightful memoir. I learned a lot about like North Korea and life in North Korea while reading it. King and the Dragonflies is gonna go. Mm, is it me or is it the book? I'm gonna go push me up against the wall, give me a kiss, and I might get excited. Yeah. That, that feels right. This is another middle grade and again it just didn't quite hit the mark for me. I think it's a lovely book. It's about this boy. Actually, mm, it's actually going to go, I don't remember love. It was an awful long time ago. Ah! You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Very harsh. No, no, it's not. I'm lying. It's going to go and push me up against the wall. Yeah, it's a lovely story about this boy whose brother has recently died and he thinks that he can see him in the dragonflies. It's also, also about a friend um, who's being bullied, but it just was missing a bit of spice, a little bit of spice. Add a little bit of spice. Not spice as in like adult things, this is the middle grade. I mean, <laughs> I mean spice as in, you know, it's missing a bit of something something, it's missing a bit of flavour, it's missing a bit of like, give me something, you know? Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Oh, okay. This is another push me up against the wall. I didn't love this either. I am going to continue on the series because the ending to this was very good. But I found the rest of the book a bit boring. I found it a bit like monotonous, a bit drawn out. It's going there. Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson. Another push me up against the wall. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to this man. <laughs> sorry to this man. I wanted to love it. I have loved Renee Watson's books in the past. But it was just, again, missing something. It's like half a romance book, half a learning to self-love book. And unlike Honey Girl, which I thought the self-love kind of element took control, is what I think needs to happen in this situation. In this one, the romance took control and the self-love was a subplot, but I don't think self-love, because it's such an internal thing that you can't show through dialogue, you've got to have a lot of time with the character for that. I don't think that works. I think if you've got romance plot and self-love, self-love needs to take precedence. And I think that was the problem with this. Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow. Hmm. Album's amazing song to song. Lovely middle grade. Lovely lessons to be learned. I've spoken about this one a lot. It was a beautiful book. I really enjoyed it. The Sinister Mystery of the Mesmerizing Girl. We've struck gold. 
we struck gold. We have struck gold. I love this series so much. It's my favorite series. I, all these books are like, again, like Heartstopper, I probably could have told you I was gonna give this five stars. It was not an objective rating. <laughs> Mama Rue, still me. The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter series, like, that is not objective in any way. It's not objective. That is just, it's gonna be five stars. And if there's any, ever any more books, which I like, come on, please. But there probably won't be, but like, they will be five stars. They will be five stars. This series, these characters are my favorites. Six of Crows, album's oh, amazing song to song. Let's put it next to Crooked Kingdom so they're together and look cute. I didn't love it as much as Crooked Kingdom, but it's not, you know, in the category below. Sorcery of, Th oh, we've got a couple shit ones coming up, okay. <laughs> Um, Sorcery of Thorns. I'm gonna go for Push Me Up Against Wall, Give Me a Kiss, then I might get excited. Again, felt like something was missing. The romance in this I actually quite enjoyed, but I felt like, you know, I, as much as I love that it's a standalone fantasy, we need more standalone fantasies, I didn't love that I then lacked in certain areas. I just was a bit bored, and I didn't think some of the plot made sense. I just, I just have, like, very ambivalent feelings towards this book. Supernova by Marissa Mayer. Oh, this is hard. I'm gonna go, in re retrospectiveness, get the fire exit door, I'm off. This is very disappointing, which is part of why it's in our bottom category. I expected so much and it delivers so little. <laughs> it was supposed to give, but it did not give what needed to be gave. It was just like, such a shit ending. Such a shit ending to a series. Like so bad, like very, very bad. Like very, very bad. The characters did not act like themselves. It made no sense to me what was happening. It was just not good. The Baby Is Mine by Ohian Ken Braithwaite. Um, I don't remember love. It was an awful long time ago. Not terrible, but not good either. Like, I only just read it and I, I already am like, what was the point of that? What was the point of that? The writing was fun because this is a good author, but like no plot, not much going for it. You know what I mean? The Big Four by Agatha Christie, get that fire exit door, I'm off. I will say, I'm gonna put my laptop down for this. If you haven't watched BuzzFeed Unsolved's episode on Agatha Christie yet, go do it. I was already very interested in this topic before, uh, <laughs> before I did the episode on it. I've read about this a lot, but go watch it if you haven't already. Basically, Agatha went missing for like a week or something. And um, it was just after she'd found out like her husband was cheating on her and stuff. When it came to like, she had a publishing deadline and she hadn't finished her book, the next book in the Erky Poirot series. So this book, I can forgive it because it's just a collection of short stories she'd written previously, like kind of cobbled together because she was not in a good headspace. Sis had apparently like forgotten who she was. So I can excuse it being one star, but at the same time, get that fire exit door, I'm off. Like it wasn't good. It wasn't good, but it was never gonna be good because Sis was going through it. You know what I mean? A Fair Fight. Um, we'll put that in, a lot of these now are kind of in the same category. So The Fair Fight will put the album's amazing song to song. I really enjoyed this, great like historical fiction about like women in this time period, like trying to be boxers and like the constraints that women had to live under. It's very, very, a very interesting book. The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Mm, I feel like objectively, it is gold because it is so good and I know it's so good, but I was a bit confused for some of it, like personal enjoyment wise. <laughs> it, it's a clever book and I am not as clever as it. So it's gonna go in the album's amazing song to song. So is The Five by Hallie Rubenhold. It's a really interesting book about the lives of Jack the Ripper's uh, five canonical victims. So the ones that we like pretty much know that he killed. And like looking back at their lives, it was just so interesting. A, how the author was able to find out this stuff about these women, but also just kind of the lives they had to live as women born into poverty. I really, really enjoyed it. Okay, I'm just gonna put The Girl in the Tower and Winter of the Witch. I don't even know if I should do them because they are rereads. They are gold. They're like my favorite fantasy series, but they're like not from this year. Well, they are because I reread them, but they're rereads, you know? So I feel like they kind of shouldn't be there, but hey ho, they're there. My favorite fantasy series. You can't tell me otherwise. They are amazing. What? Try it, try it, try it. F with me if you want. The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. I'm gonna put in, I'm an acquired taste. Don't like me acquire some taste. A fun, murder mystery or it might just be a mystery I can't remember <laughs> everything that happened but 
it didn't quite hit the mark for me. I feel like this series hasn't been quite as good as I wanted it to. I think having read like YA mystery like A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I know what can be done in the YA genre and I feel like there's a really lot of really cool elements of this. I love how it combines like a historical storyline and this one and they're really interweaved. Um, but it was just like, okay, it wasn't great. The Hanjin Murders, the album's amazing, song to song, can't stress it enough. Really enjoyed it. A fun, like, Japanese translated murder mystery. I really want to read the other one that has already been translated. This author has written like 70 books, but only two have been translated to English. The Islanders by S.V. <laughs> Oh my god, I don't know. I'm going to put it in Get That Fire Exit Door I'm Off just because because of how disappointed I was by it. Because it was like a five star prediction. It was two stars, so it wasn't like terrible. There were some elements of it I really enjoyed. But it was such a disappointment, like so heartbreaking that I think it has to go there. The Raven Boys, I'm going to put it in Push Me Up Against a Wall because I think it felt like a prequel. And I don't think this was me. I think this is the book's fault in, in terms of like attributing blame. It felt like I deserved more from that book. So do you think I deserve better than that? Yes. And it, it got going at the end. That's why I say it felt like a prequel. It felt like to set up the rest of the series. And I don't appreciate that. I need each book to stand on its own in a series. If you've you all got to be individual. The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. I'm going to put in the album's amazing song to song. I can't stress it enough. Great book. Really, really good book. Great debut thriller. I thought it did such a great job. Seven Deaths of Evan Hardcastle. I'm going to put in I'm an Acquired Taste. Don't like me. Acquire some taste. I think it could have been me. I don't know. This one's a hard one. I did enjoy the premise, the idea, a lot of the execution, but the ending really let me down. It really, really let me down. So I think I ended up giving it like 3.5. This Time Will Be Different by Misa Suguria. I feel like it has to go in that as well. I'm an Acquired Taste. Like, I really enjoyed it. But looking back, I think the ending to this was a bit disappointing as well and it just didn't quite hit the mark that I wanted it to. The Travelling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arakawa. We've hit gold, ladies. My god, I love that book. I love that book. <laughs> And this book made me cry like no other. It was such a sad book. It's this like relationship between a cat and their owner. If you love cats, you have to read this book. Like you don't have a choice. Like you, you have to read it right now. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. Watch Over Me, My Nina the Core. I'm gonna say we've struck gold. I loved this. It was such an interesting book. It's a story of this girl who goes to work at this farm and there's basically ghosts there. And you're like, are these really ghosts or are these the ghosts of our past? We don't know. And then the last three, When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain, Whites on Race and Other Falsehoods, and The Year of the Witching, I'm gonna put them all in the album's amazing Song to Song. Um, when the Tide Came Down the Mountain, a great novella. I really love this novella. White on Race and Falsehoods, a really interesting and insightful, like, piece of essays on racism, particularly around the death of George Floyd. And The Year of the Witching, a haunting, beautiful, uh, horror, historical fantasy. So that is the 50 books I have read this year, tier ranked. I feel like the we've struck gold is realistic. I feel like maybe I needed another category to split up the album's amazing song to song. I can't stress it enough. I feel like we needed another category in here. I feel like we needed one, two, three, four. We needed seven categories. We needed one more. So apologies, but they are all really good, like four star books. I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually had so much fun tier ranking these. Um, I definitely want to do some more in the future. So let me know other things you would like me to tier rank. And uh, if you got into the end of this video, comment. What emoji am I feeling like today? Comment a thumbs up emoji if you got into the end. <laughs> comment a thumbs up emoji because I feel like my reading on the whole, after doing that, I feel very positive about my reading so far this year. I feel like my reading on the whole has been pretty good. And thank you so much for watching. As always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.